Burr. It's cold this morning. First one here. That's impressive. Welcome back to Times Square. It's Saturday, March 31st. Tomorrow is Easter Sunday. We're getting ready for the Easter brunch. The 7th and 8th graders, Flame, as we call them, are showing up here in about five hours to start getting ready for that. I've got some dinner ready for them in the crock pot. It'll be nice and warm by the time we're done with our setup. Right now, I've got to head downstairs, grab our bins, make sure everything is in line for tonight and for tomorrow morning. So here we go. I know you guys love the basement.
Easter. He is risen. Hey, Seth. Hi. He's risen. He's risen indeed all over here. He's risen. He's risen indeed, hallelujah. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hey, camera, camera. What? He has risen. He has risen indeed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has risen. He has risen indeed. <laughs> what would you endure to protect a lie? This past Sunday, we celebrated Easter and we gathered together to declare that he is risen. But that fact was doubted from the very beginning. On Good Friday, Jesus Christ died on a cross. He died as the atoning sacrifice. He died to reconcile us to God for the sin that we commit, for the separation that is between us and God. His death brings reconciliation. His death brings forgiveness. His resurrection brings new life. Paul says, if we are united with Christ in a death like his, surely we're united with him in a resurrection like his. A resurrection of body and soul. A perfect resurrection of new life with God. But Christ's resurrection from the dead, so doubt. Think of Thomas, who when the other disciples said, He is risen and we have seen the Lord, said, Unless I see the marks of the crucifixion and place my fingers into the holes in his hands and touch his side, I will not believe. Of course, Christ appeared to Thomas, and Thomas believed. And those disciples followed Christ's direction and gave up everything, everything, to declare this gospel. To go out and preach Christ crucified, to preach Christ's death and resurrection for atonement, for forgiveness, for new life. But why? There was no earthly gain in what they were doing. There was no power to be had. There was no money to be had. Not only that, there was everything to lose. The disciples were willing to give their own lives to preach this gospel. Would they have done that for a lie? Would they have done that to protect a lie, to protect a conspiracy that they somehow created? Again, there's no earthly gain in it for them. Leave everything and follow me. Think about the first martyr. The first martyr is a man named Stephen who wasn't even one of the 12. Instead, he was appointed by the Twelve as a deacon in the early church. And think about Paul, Paul who saw Jesus on the road to Damascus, who had a vision, who was called to Christ and gave up everything. Would they have done that to protect a lie or a conspiracy? Think of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Christ's death and resurrection is a complete story. Without the death and resurrection, there is no forgiveness. There is no atonement. There is no reconciliation. There is no new life. He is risen. Hallelujah. When I was young, one of my favorite games to play was a game called Balderdash. We played it at every holiday, and I liked it because it gave you an opportunity to be creative, uh, to write ridiculous things, and to just have a lot of fun. So last night I decided to see if we could play it as a large group game here at Youth Group, and now I'm going to tell you all about it. So here's how to play Balderdash. Step one, find obscure references. Step two. Share those with all of the people playing and give them an opportunity to write down their own definition or description. Step three, collect all of the players' definitions and descriptions. Step four, share them with everyone playing and laugh a lot. Step five, 
vote for your favorite or the one that you think is correct. And finally, tally the votes. If you pick the correct definition or description, you get a point. If someone else picks your definition or description, you also get a point. That's how you play Balderdash. So here's the cool thing. We didn't get a chance to finish last night, so we're gonna play together right now. Here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna read these 12 clues. I don't know, what do you wanna call them? Whatever, I'm gonna read these 12 things. They are all connected with the date, September 12th, 1910. So our task is to figure out what happened of significance on September 12th, 1910. I'll leave this in the description below, and in the comments, vote for your favorite. And here's what's gonna happen. If you vote for the correct one, I'm gonna put you in a drawing for a coffee gift card. Youth, if someone picks yours, you'll be entered into the same drawing. That drawing will happen next Wednesday night. So, you have a limited amount of time to vote for your favorite. September 12th, 1910. First recorded UFO sighting. President Calvin Coolidge signs an act to start producing all-American hot dogs. The Barbie doll was invented. A treaty was made before the start of World War I. September 12, 1910, a stampede of elephants ruined a small village in Ecuador. Airplanes, Wright Brothers, that's all it says. September 12th, 1910 was four years before the start of World War I. September 12th, 1910, women gained the right to vote. September 12th, 1910, the first female cop was sworn in in LA. September 12th, 1910, the day Orville and Wilbur first took flight. September 12th, 1910, the San Francisco earthquake of 1910. And September 12th, 1910, Herbert Hoover. So there you have it. Comment below, let me know which one you think is the correct one. If you pick the correct one, I'm gonna put you in a drawing for a coffee gift card. There you go, guys. That's this week's episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Comment below and let me know what you think really happened on September 12th, 1910. And if your name is BJ, I give you permission to hit the dislike button because I know you really want to do that. It'll let me know you watch the video. See you next week!